Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna to take a look at this thing right here. Now, this is an Anovium Terralynx 7 switch. It has 32 400 gigabit ethernet ports, making it a 12.8 terabit per second class switch. Anovium, for those who just don't know the company, are actually the upstart switch chip maker, really challenging Broadcom, I mean, let's call it what it is. They're challenging Broadcom for the high-end switch chip supremacy. The company has a valuation, I think, of over a billion dollars at this point based on their latest round of funding. The kind of cool thing is that they're actually seeing success. Now, a lot of companies have gone out and said, hey, we're gonna make some switch chips and then they're gonna be really good. But Novium actually has a distinction of the fact that they're actually getting deployed in a lot of cloud and large customers because they have a really cool ASIC. And not only do they have the Terralynx 7 that we're gonna look at today, but they also have a Terralynx 5, which is kind of the lower end switch. So if you had like a 48 port, 25 gig ethernet switch with 800 gig uplinks, that would be what you would use the Terralynx 5 for. And then they have their next gen coming out, which is Terralynx 8 for the 800 gigabit ethernet generation. But in terms of what's shipping in volume today, I think the Terralynx 7 is the company's big product. And so anyway, before the next gen of server reviews hit, I said, oh, I really wanna do a 400 gig ethernet switch review. And so I, sent a note to the Novium guys that said, hey, you know, do you guys happen to have one that I could borrow for a little bit so I could do a video and do an article on it? And they said, hmm, we think we can find something. And they managed to, so I went and picked it up. And so what we're gonna do is take a look at the switch and then I'm gonna show you what actually pushing 32 ports of 400 gig ethernet looks like. So let's get to the switch. Now looking at the front of the switch, you can see the 32 ports of QSFP DD. If you're accustomed to the 40 gig generation, you'll see QSFP plus. On 100 gig ethernet, you'll see QSFP 28. 200 gig ethernet, QSFP 56 most likely. And here we have QSFP DD. Now this switch that we're looking at is actually not branded with the Taiwanese ODM's name on it. So we're just not gonna say it because I don't wanna get anybody too mad at me. But you can see that this is branded as an Anovium switch and it is blue, which is my favorite color. So I guess that's a little plus, but if your favorite color is not blue, I guess it's not. Looking at the rear of the unit, you can see that we have a fairly standard hot swap fan array. Plus we have two redundant power supplies and these redundant power supplies are 1.3 kilowatt units, but they're not actually gonna, this switch doesn't use 1.3 kilowatts. We'll talk about that after we go through the hardware overview and then a little bit about the performance. We'll talk about power consumption. So opening up the switch, we can see the general layout that we see in a lot of switches. You see the giant heat sink there for the Terralynx 7 and switch ASIC, but then basically ports in front, all the management stuff is in the rear with the fans and power supplies in the rear as well. Just going through and talking about some of the big components that you're gonna see on the motherboard, on either side of the Terralynx 7 switch chip ASIC, which is in the middle under that giant heatsink, you're gonna see two heatsinks, those are CPLDs. Just behind one of those, you will see a, another heatsink, which is for an FPGA. On the flip side of that, on the other side, you're gonna see an M.2 SSD slot. Behind all of this, you're gonna see two boards. Now, one of these boards is the BMC board. So under there, you're gonna see an AST2520 BMC. That's very similar to what we would see on servers. It's just a standard baseboard management controller. If you don't know what a baseboard management controller is, we have a link about that in the description so you can learn about it. Running the control plane for this switch, we actually have a Xeon D1527 COM card. And that COM card has, you can see the memory on board, and that just kind of fits in the back of the switch. And of course, because I always like to point out these things and the other one is covered by heatsink, like I always say, all of these switches that you look at, you're almost always gonna see a little FPGA that's either a Xilinx or an Altera FPGA. And here we have a nice little Altera one. Something I did wanna point out as an overall theme in this switch, is you're gonna notice that there's a huge amount of thought and effort placed on the thermal performance and cooling of this solution. And we can start at the front of that where we look at the QSFP DD cages. If you look at those cages, what you're gonna see is the fact that they have little heat sinks on them. So like you would have a processor where you put a heat sink on it, the QSFP DD cages themselves have a little heat sink on it, each of them just to be able to cool the optics. As we move to the realm of higher speed networking, even just the simple optics or DACs, those will end up generating more heat. And so we need things like these little heat sinks to be able to cool even just the little cages themselves. Now at this point, we've done at least three 100 gig ethernet 32 port switch teardowns, just kind of looking at what's inside. And something you're always gonna see is just a giant heat sink on any of these switch ASICs. All of these use a ton of power, or at least they need a lot of cooling to be able to run. And as you would imagine, as we get to higher speed, 
networking, these of course generate more heat and use more power. And so therefore we need to have more robust heat sinks. What is a little bit different in this switch is what's around that heat sink though. You can see that on either side, we actually have airflow guides that make sure that the airflow goes in over the QSFPDD cage heat sinks that then hits the switch ASIC and then goes back and hits the BMC as well as the control plane Xeon D. In the rear, of course, we have the fans that exhaust out of this channel, but it's just kind of a good example of how this system is constructed. Another quick difference is just on the PCB where you have the fan control and between that and the main switch PCB, what you're gonna see is that there's this little airflow guide to just make sure the error is going in the correct direction. It's just kind of a really small little feature, but it is something that is different than a lot of the other switches that we've seen. There's a clear emphasis on thermal management in this switch. Let's go over the features real quick. So in terms of one of the big features of the Innovium solution is their flashlight telemetry solution, which gives the visibility and analytics. A lot of the cloud providers like the fact that you can actually see, you know, hey, is there an issue with the switch or something at a pretty fine green level? And that allows them to go find issues and, you know, use their software to be able to find and identify issues, even sometimes before you know, a switch port fails or an optic fails or something like that. And so that's something that a lot of the larger providers that are deploying these things really like. I think Novium has TerraScale, if I remember that correctly, which is basically their switch fabric. And they basically have big buffers and they have a fast switch fabric, which ensures that they have low latency. And then they also have Inoflex, which is their programmable forwarding pipeline. Now that we've done the hardware overview, let's go down to the Novium office. And we're actually going to go look and see 400 gigabit ethernet across 32 ports. So what you're gonna see in terms of demo is that we have 16 VLANs and basically what we're doing is we're using a snake topology and we're pumping 400 gigs of traffic in each side. And so basically that gives us 400 gigs going one direction, 400 gigs going the other direction through, through all of the ports on the switch and using VLANs. I should mention that this particular switch is running Sonic. Sonic is just an absolute huge force in the networking industry right now. And so as you'd kind of expect, you'd want to have anything that is in this class of switch run Sonic and this does. Also, if you notice that there are a little bit differences in terms of some of the packets, those are the Sonic control packets, which is why I'm mentioning it. Man, wouldn't it be cool to get one of those load generators for the STH lab? Hmm, I wonder if we can do that. Now, I mentioned that this has 1.3 kilowatt, 80 plus platinum power supplies, but it doesn't necessarily use 1.3 kilowatts. Instead, this solution uses something more like 0.6 kilowatts in operation. That is certainly more than the 32 port 100 gig ethernet switches that we've been looking at. But on the other hand, we have to remember that this switch is four times as fast. One of the questions I know we're gonna get in comments is like, why would anybody need a 400 gig ethernet switch? So when we think about the cases in those aggregation layers that are above the top of rack switch, that's where the 400 gig ethernet becomes really important. Frankly, doing 400 gig ethernet out of a normal server there are multi-host adapters and all that kind of stuff. But realistically, we're not going to see 400 gig Ethernet adapters until we get to PCIe Gen 5 in 2022. So they're just not something that people are deploying millions of ports worth of 400 gig Ethernet for today. Instead, they're really for the aggregation levels that sit above the top of rack switches. If you take something like the 48, 25 gig Ethernet plus 8, 100 gig Ethernet, Teralynx 5, one rack unit product. And that's pretty, pretty, uh, I guess, standard form factor for a lot of switches. What you're going to notice is that those eight ports from the top of rack switch will end up going into different levels of the aggregation layers. And in those aggregation layers is exactly where the Teralynx 7 based switches are actually really important. All of those 400 gig ethernet ports, all 32 of them can be broken out into 100 gigabit ethernet or 200, I guess as well. But if you're using hundred gig ethernet, you can get up to 128 ports of 100 gig ethernet, or you could also use some of the ports as those hundred gig ethernet ports to go to the top rack switches and then use other ports as 400 gig uplink ports to next levels of the aggregation layer. And so that brings us to a kind of classic computer problem, which is Radix, or at least networking problem, which is Radix. And the idea is with a 400 gig ethernet switch, well, not only can you aggregate all of that bandwidth underneath in terms of those top of rack switches, but you also need fewer levels of that in that aggregation layer because you have a larger switch sitting above it. So instead of just quadrupling the data rate and saying that this is you know four of the 100 gig version of the switch, 
Well, this is actually a little bit more than that. Most people will tend to tell you that it's six or seven kind of at the lower end in terms of six or 700 gig ethernet switches that one of these 400 gig ethernet switches replaces up to somewhere in around 12 or so is usually about the top end that you're gonna hear. And by having this larger and higher capacity switch, it does a couple things. So the first thing that you can have is you could potentially have more servers in a data center served by the same number of aggregation layers. And so it actually gives you more capacity potential or node capacity in your data center, but also does a couple other things. Like for example, you need fewer switches. If you want to maintain the same number of servers, you can use fewer switches to end up servicing that larger number. And so the way that these TCO calculations go is they basically say, well, you know, we can use fewer 400 gig ethernet switches. And if we use 100 gig ethernet switches, so of course we will use the higher end switches. Since these switches don't often cost like 4X the 100 gig generation, a lot of TCO calculations are like, well, you know, we can go put a 400 gig switch in, we can use fewer switches. And so if we save six switches at, you know, six of the 100 gig ethernet switches, and we can just put in one 400 gig switch, well, that kind of balances out. So now we can end up spending less money up front. But then there are also operational benefits. We see a lot of the 32 port 100 gig ethernet switches running at around 200 watts, but you know, a 400 gig switch might use 600 watts. And that may seem like a three X, but if you're all of a sudden using one sixth the number of switches, well, I guess that gives you more power for your data center to go run compute workloads. After all, if you're a cloud provider, all you want to do is get as much compute in your data center as possible and as much speed as possible. So that way you can sell it to your customers. Now we've talked about the power consumption savings. We've talked about the, you know, upfront purchase considerations and just, you know, managing, I guess, fewer switches. But the other big one that you get is, well, performance. Now, if you have fewer switches in all of your network, well, then what that means is that you basically have fewer hops and each hop adds some latency. Now, switches are very fast, of course, but at some point, you know, if you do have to go through another, say, two layers of switches or more, that ends up adding extra hops and each hop adds latency. It adds another opportunity for something to go wrong. I mean, there's a whole bunch of reasons that you want a more flat or flatter network. And this going up to a 400 gig ethernet generation certainly provides that. Well, I don't necessarily think think that a 400 gig ethernet switch today makes a lot of sense as a top of rack switch, just because frankly, the servers themselves can't handle those speeds. What I do think it does provide is the ability to work in some of the higher levels of the network architecture and really provide that better radix. And while we're looking at Terralink 7 and we're saying like, hey, this is a really cool, really awesome technology, the cloud providers and also Inovium with Terralink 8 and you know Broadcom is going to do this too, but they're all going to be, all the network providers are looking at the 800 gig generation and looking what that takes. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at this 400 gig ethernet switch. I think it was just really cool. Hey, I just want to say thank you really quick to Inovium for letting us borrow the switch. I think, you know, it's really cool to just kind of see this level of technology that we don't necessarily get to see in racks themselves. But then also, I just want to say thanks for letting us see the full speed in the lab as well. I thought that was really cool. And hey, if you like this video, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.